Alright, so welcome back to the next part in this let's play. Last we left off, we just finished uh, going through uh, Adorable. I forget his fucking name already, but we went through the treasure trove basically and found that, uh, yeah, that thing up there, it's a uh, fucking uh, void gate fisher thing. So, a brother's grief. You're still is surprising the void gate with a skull of the eye. Yeah, of course she is. <laughs> of course. She's like, ooh, don't mind if I do. I must admit, I am deathly curious to know how a void gate came to be hidden in the depths of these ruins. To tell that tale, we must first peer far to the south, and even further into memory. Age five millennia past, when the Algan Empire sent an invading force to the shores of Merasidia. Mm. The southern people rallied around the commanding figures of Bahamut and Tiamat and fought fiercely to repel the would be conquerors. With Bahamut's defeat, however, the tide turned against them. Desperate to seize any advantage, the Merasidians resorted to summoning primal entities. In response, Emperor Zande forged a covenant with the Cloud of Darkness, sovereign among the all-devouring denizens of the Void. Thus bolstered by icons on one side and Void Scent on the other, the two armies clashed in a battle of unspeakable carnage. So much death, so much loss. I consider myself well-versed in that period of history, yet you speak as one who witnessed it happen. He probably did, because he's one of the first brood, so I would assume. Indeed, I did. Yeah. I heard Tiamat's roar of defiance and sped toward that war-torn land. along with my sibling, Ashdaya. Oh. We dragons are not male or female, as men are wont to classify, but elder sister is the closest a mortal tongue can come to describing what she meant to me. I was the last of our brood to hatch. And Ashdaya cared for me where my sire could not. Thus, I was with her when Tiamat rode. I was with her when she journeyed south. And I was with her when she fought against the void sent hordes. Yet, no matter how many of their vile fiends we cast down, more rose from the abyss to take their place. Faced with an unwinnable war of attrition, Ashdaya risked her all. Final gamble. She plunged through the void gate itself to strike at the root of their strength. Ooh, whoa. What? what the holy shit. I tried to follow in her wake, determined to lend what aid I could. But even as I came upon Alad's glittering tower, I saw the rift close behind her. And Ashdaya has been lost to us ever since. I find I must retract my earlier claim of historical knowledge. Nowhere in the Crystal Tower's archives did I see mention of such noble sacrifice. That does not surprise me. To Alagan eyes, it must have seemed as if a lone dragon, driven to madness, simply dove through the gate and did not return. For my part, I spent long years searching for the means to reunite with Ashdaya. Until I could search no more. Until Alag was dust. 
and the arts to open a void gate large enough to accommodate a dragon forever lost. Yet you have the beginnings of a gate right here, under the control of a harnessed device. My discovery came before Radzat Han was founded. Though I scoured the lands for a method to cross the rift, it was beneath the sea that I chanced to find a natural plane of fissure. It was, however, far too narrow to admit a worm's bulk. Only after our city rose upon the rock, and I could enlist the aid of our talented alchemists, did matters take a favorable turn. Their dedication was beyond reproach. Tirelessly, they worked to expand the fissure, and after decades of toil, it finally grew to a size that a child might pass through. Not long ago, you told us that you called out to your kin, but Ashdaya's answer was silence. I suspect the conclusion to your tale is not a joyful one. With hope in my heart, I used a sinew lake ramp to cross the threshold. But no, I did not find her. What I found was a host of void scent clamoring around the opening they had sensed. It was but a moment. I had no choice but to retreat and allow the portal to contract once more. The gate was a threat to your people. You had to decide between endangering Razad Han and abandoning your sister. And you chose the latter. It was not that thy sibling scorned thy call. It was that she was trapped beyond a barrier through which neither roar nor dragon may pass. Even now, in the desolate world of the Thirteenth. I can scarce imagine your pain, yet it was wise not to linger in that place. Too long a sojourn, and even a being of your power risks being warped into a creature of the Void. You've seen this phenomenon before, when we stepped into the darkness. The, all the, the fucking right, yeah, yeah. I remember when Nero turned fucking purple. Man was dying, dude. Since husband turned purple. Well, yes. His wounds had allowed the void's corruption to enter his body and twist his ether. Had it been allowed to progress much longer, I presume he would have been fully transformed. Then there is little hope for Ashdaya. Oh. Ah, no. I hadn't meant to. I speak only of possibilities. The scales of the first brood are extraordinarily resistant to ethereal fluctuations. They are the protective talisman's core components, after all, and even the corruption I described would struggle to overcome. Of course. With the Warden Scale in one's possession, one could conceivably survive a stay in the 13th without being warped by its energies. Be that as it may, it is too late to rescue my sister. Five thousand years too late. And now countless others look to me for guidance and protection. When I sensed intruders in the ruins, I came only to ensure that the gate remained closed. That, and to secure the treasure, of course. I wish only to forget the rest. Yashtola? No. No. Absolutely not.
So, they managed not to only expand the fissure, but also manipulate it as one might a gate. Astonishing. Is there any chance I could learn more about how this feat was accomplished? I will tell you all that I can. First, however, I must return to the High Crucible and arrange to replace the Guardians you so handedly destroyed. It will not do to leave the gate undefended. Sorry. Ah, my apologies. We were perhaps a touch zealous in our rush to uncover the vault secrets. If the constructs can be repaired, we would be happy to offer assistance. That will not be necessary. Much as I retain spare vessels for myself, we keep duplicate guardians on hand for such eventualities. In any case, we should return to Rods at Harm. Why are you faster? Why are you faster? Ah, over there. Oops. Sorry. I promise we will discuss the void gate further, but first I must attend to the matter of the vault sentinels. As your instruments have no doubt informed you, the Kapapalu have been reduced to so much scrap. Please, <laughs> please bring a new one out of storage and see that it is con uh, conveyed to its post along with some few lesser constructs. Is it tomb robbers? Fiends born from the Tower of Zon? By the sisters, do not tell me a blasphemy yet roams free. No, it's just, uh, us. So we're just like, um... Oh, Groho! <laughs> Why such guilty faces? Surely it isn't you who are responsible for this? Uh oh. <clears throat> well, the details aren't important. I shall see it done immediately. We're also guilty. We're like, oh, oh, sorry. And with that, the vault, um, the vault will soon be secure once more. Now, I believe you had questions. Quite a few, in fact. But I'd like to begin with the gate itself. Is it? Uh, it is still functioning. Yes. Indeed. Which is why I saw it sealed with an alchemically forged lock and warded it with my magics. Such power must not fall into the wrong hands. In truth, the primary reason for the vault's construction was to keep the gate hidden from the outside world. So much effort for such a little door. Well, uh, that little door you speak of leads into a, an abyss teeming with unspeakable horrors. That said, in its current state, it would admit only the lowliest of void scent. From this side, no man would be able to pass through. No man? I should think Alphino would think. Give it a farm enough push! Estinian! No! Physical size is only one consideration. The true restriction hinges upon the etheric density of the soul in transit. And yet you succeeded in expanding this diminutive portal and setting your simulacrum to the 13th. Thanks to my brilliant alchemist, I should have destroyed the anomaly when I found it, but instead I bade them devise a means to control it. After much experimentation, they accomplished the uh, impossible. A method was conceived by which my magics could manipulate the fissure and transform it into a serviceable gate, but the process has long since been forgotten. Once I had given up searching for uh, uh, oh my god, as that oh my god, as the as Dasha, there was no need to preserve such esoteric and dangerous knowledge. Thus, the gate is laying dormant for years uncounted. Our own passage to the uh, 13th was made relatively simple thanks to the Crystal Tower. An ancient mechanism channeled the tower's vast stores of energy to open a void gate, one bound to a covenant made with the cloud of darkness. 
Once that sovereign entity was beaten back, however, the covenant was broken and the doorway severed from its connection to the void. Theoretically, it should be possible to reconnect the gate by forging a new pact with another void set. Such deals usually end in immaterial like death. Me looks to my void set avatar. Hey, buddy, you wanna like. <laughs> you wanna help? You seem to have been struck with. Uh... Huh? Oh! Uh, wait! Wait, is this, is this a unique dialogue if you're a Reaper? Wait, hold up! You seem to have struck a bargain of your own, Avery. Though it serves you well in battle, be aware that the beneficial nature of your arrangement is the exception which proves the rule. Wait, did it- is that really? In any case, we should attempt to gain an understanding of the bounty gate. Mayhap you could resume the search for your sister. That'd be so cool if that was a unique dialogue piece for Reapers, because oh my god. As I have already explained, I put those future hopes to rest centuries ago. My place and my duty is here now. Ah, I meant to ask, what prompted you to search the vault for... Sorry, what, what had prompted you to search for the vault in the first place? To see if the legends were true, or it was all Estinian's idea. I wanted to see if the legends were true. If there was somebody, something beneath the waters of the bounty. As you have seen, the fabulous wealth in the stories is quite real. If not, it's rumored origin. But I'm afraid I must assert a prior claim. I've been adding to that trove for years, little by little, but the time has come to spend it. Um, I might, sorry, that I might alleviate my people's suffering. Then we are of one mind. We have no intention of taking it for ourselves. Isn't that, isn't that right, my friend? Mm -hmm. Okay, listen, I would have taken like a few pieces of coin, but not a lot, not a lot. Your Excellency, would you object if I were to conduct a closer examination of the gate? I will make no attempt to open it, of course. I owe you and yours a debt that can never be repaid. Whatever boon you ask of me, you shall have it. You are most gracious. I shall take full advantage of your permission. I thought I could join thee in thy study. The Lawfords will be anxious to receive my report. I beg my leave of you. Okay, the Lawfords, I swear to God. And I must be off to Charlianne as well. Mistress Carl was eager to speak with you about that request, so please come back to the annex as soon as you are able. Farewell for now. We can discuss my findings once I return. You'll not be rid of me so easily. Yeah, let's keep it that way, honestly. Oh, that was some juicy lore. Uh, Chronicle of a New Era quest, Miss- Oh, wait. Myths of the Realm! <gasps> that's the Alliance Ray, I think, right? I'm pretty sure that's the Alliance Ray. I will make a whole complete new video for that, but this is it. This is just MSQ for now. The difficult part in all of this will be deciding how best to put these riches to use. Will you lend me your assistance in these deliberations? Uh... Yeah, of course. Thank you, Avery. Avery and I are in this together. I will follow his example. Do not follow my example. Do not. That is a bad idea. You thought you were bad with money? I'm bad with money. No, meanwhile elsewhere. Oh. Whoa. Hello? What is this? Who are you? Okay, those are elements. Um, Hooms? Who are you? There's four. Throne of Earth. 
I sensed the breaching of a gate, but it was not instigate instigated from this side. It was thrown open from the other. I too felt it. A rare occurrence, yes, but such a tiny portal is beneath our notice. There are more pressing matters at hand. An opportunity is upon us, the coming of which we have awaited for nigh on 10,000 years. We dare not let it slip our grasp. Yet we must not underestimate he who vested the cloud of darkness. Even restrained by a covenant, the cloud was no feeble wisp to be dispersed by some flesh and blood mortal. Bah, let him come. I will drown the world and watch this fleshling gasp for breath in his final moments. Who are these? Your zeal is admirable, but forget not our cause. Think back on the struggles beneath the sunless sky. Remember why we see not our will to fight. This time we set the war in motion and win redemption for our star. Whoa. Whoa. And back to the funky music. Ooh. Uh, sharing the wealth, Rashawn wishes to discuss the distribution of the treasure. Shall we begin? If we are to spend the treasure wisely, then we must first determine which groups would benefit most from the monetary assistance. Some of my citizens may find it intimidating to speak with the Satrap directly, so I would ask that you act in my stead. Avery, you are to visit Akali uh, and Yedlama. Speak with Matsya and his people and listen to their grievances. Sinian, I bid you do the same at Palakistan. I will be conducting my own inquiries at the a giant's gall grounds. Once you believe you have ascertained the needs of the populace, we can reconvene at Megaduda. Uh, Megaduda! Oh my god, I fucking did the thing! No! Conversation, I just look at my void and I'm like, don't fucking don't cuck me. We are in this together, you bitch. What is this? Oh, shivering. Shut up. I'm looking at you. Hey, it's my friend. Oh, Avery, I was so glad to see you had returned unharmed. You finished with the boat, then? Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Anything the village desperately needs? Well, I suppose causes laws hit us the hardest. I've been trying to find buyers for my fish, but although I sell a few here and there, it's so much more difficult than it was before. Everyone's still struggling to rebuild their lives. For now, we're just banding together as best we can. And welcome, traveler. If this is your first visit to Thavnir, then you must try my special Amra Lassi. Its refreshing zest cannot be beat. What could be? Uh, what could such a wonder cost? You wonder. Normally, I part with three bottles for the generous price of nineteen thousand and eight hundred gil. But for you, I am willing to go as low as even ten thousand. You'd be practically stealing from me. Hey, hey, buddy! Didn't didn't we learn? What would you say? Stealing at that price? You'd be the only thief around here. Still not turning a profit these days? Or I am not Estidian. I am not Estidian. Estidian, who is this? Yeah, you're the one who was with that spirit haunting fellow. Well, you can hardly blame a man for trying. The world may no, no longer be on fire, but we are still sifting through the ashes, so to speak. Sisters, spare me. We might as well have 
have that ugly tower back for the scant few travelers we see these days. I barely have my uh, sorry, I myself barely have the coin to buy at local prices. I tell you, if I didn't charge the uh, odd adventurer a small fortune for afternoon tea, I'd be scavenging for scraps in the streets. I am not a stidian. You will not fool me with that shit. up how fair is the port well it's in shambles isn't it the trade routes are open once more now that now that the uh, danger has passed certainly but no small number of merchants have had to sell their ships to make ends meet in the short term add to that uh, add to that the sailors we lost in the final days and it's little wonder the flow of exports is no more than a pitiful trickle if Pazzo and his consortium were still with us i'm sure he'd have found a way to turn our fortunes around now that was a, now that was a man who got things done God's rest his soul. You have spoken with key, the key local figures and gained an understanding of the populace's hardships. Roshan awaits your report at Megaduda. Got it. I was like, where is he? He's so tiny. Ah, my advisor's return. I've just made it back myself. Why do you retain this vessel now that your true form is known? You could have flown across the island in a fraction of the time. Be that as it may, the sight of a massive creature descending from the sky can be startling, to say the least. And there are a few places I can enter comfortably without risking, without risk of flattening some cart or stall. <laughs> hmm. Fair enough. As for my inquiries, the people of Palakistan were unanimous in their reply. They are surviving. Resources were stretched to the limit when refugees were pouring in, but they per persevered with some assistance from Yedlamad. From what I understand, they have been an independent community, hunters and foragers and like, and I was assured that the jungle provides for their needs, for the most part. Alakistan has weathered the disaster better than most, it seems. I myself have heard good news and bad. The quarrymen were cautiously optimistic, having just sold a full wagon of giant skull to a foreign trader. But such visitors are few and far between. Compared to our best years, the weight of some, the weight of stone leaving Thafnir has been light indeed. Our nation is small and isolated; its prosperity dependent on a steady stream of exports. We must identify any obstacles to the flow of trade, so we may begin working to remove them. Tell me, what did you learn in Aka uh, Akali and Yidlamad? I see. Without a dedicated buyer, the average fisherman must struggle to offload his daily catch. Which is why I believe we should first address the lack of ships and shortage of able-bodied sailors in Yidlamad. I am reminded of a child I spied as I made my way back to the palace. His father lo lost at sea when the beasts sunk their vessel. So many variations of the same tragic tale repeated over and over. So many lives lost. grief to drown in if we don't let us uh, if we let ourselves be overcome but we will not avery Astinian, i will consider the perspectives you've brought me and devise a plan to help my people confront this adversary adversity sorry uh, come i would like i would like you to be in, at in attendance when i announce the proposal to my assembled functionaries
invested into the trading port of Yenheim. Our merchants must have their operations restored, their ships rebuilt. Commerce must flow once more. None were spared the tragedy of the final days. Of this, I am well aware. But an absence was created by the loss of Karazhan's consortium. And what of the children who were left without family to care for them? Mm, that is a concern which weigheth heavily upon my mind. A simple gift of coin will soon be exhausted, leaving these young souls adrift on the fringes of our society. Oh, you can really see Vitra's uh, the scars where his skills were taken to create a Talisman's right there. Ooh. Nay, a proper solution is needed. One which doth guarantee their welfare for years to come. Thou hast surely seen how other nations rise to meet this challenge adventurer. What dost thou deem the wisest course? Oh, fuck. I have to make a decision. No! Uh, what will you say? Taxes? Levy them on trade profits in exchange for your investment? It takes a village. Adelshire's orphanage was funded through trade in highly coveted goods, or the firmament's orphanage was built as part of, commun of, of a communal restoration effort. Oh, I'm pretty sure this one. Uh, Idleshire, because they need trade. They need... Need money. I would, yeah, no, Idleshire. Yeah, Idleshire's orphanage was funded through these trades, and therefore, if you trade these, then it should be fine. Of course, we can draw on trading profits to build a new institution. Let us put this idea into practice. shall be written, requiring all who receive of our Zadar's treasure to commit a portion of their future earnings towards the running of an orphanage. Now, such an influential policy is deserving of a worthy name. Something with uh, Kazal seems appropriate, or why not honor one of your most successful merchants? Something with Kazal seems appropriate. Ah, a fitting candidate. Kazal should be remembered, not as the blasphemy which terrorized Daphne, but as a hard word. to this proposition. Many here lost loved ones to the beasts. In that time of strife, any one of us could have broken. Any one of us may have been taken by despair. When I think of Kalzal, I feel no hatred. Only a stinging regret that we could not save him as well. Isn't that right, men? This bodes well for that boy. The rod was it. Perhaps he can cut ties with that shady peddler. Then let it be done. Henceforth, this initiative. 
initiative shall be known as the Kalazal Foundation. Nabdeen, thou art to assemble a patrol and ensure that no child in this city liveth in squalor. Dragon and man, side by side in pursuit of a brighter morrow. Reminded of Ishgard. No. Give me that money. Where? Hello? Oh my god. I'm bridging the rift. Thank you for putting forth Kazel's name. Those who, whose lives he enriched will take comfort in seeing his legacy honored. You will forgive me for not speaking sooner, but I bear a message from Archon Nishtola. She asks that you meet her at the High Crucible at your earliest convenience. Understood. Thank you. Ristola must have finished her study of the Void Gate. Shall we hear what she has to say then? I will go with you. I thought this a trap would be too busy setting up the foundation. My clerics have, have been the well-oiled cogs of this administration since before Ahawan assumed the office. They understand what needs to be done. And I am curious to learn what conclusions your Archon has reached concerning the gate's unique construction. As you wish, allow me to lead the way, Your Excellency. Right, here we all are. You discovered something new. I took a closer look at that device. I was able to determine how it keeps the void gate sealed, but not how it might instead be employed to expand the opening. For that, I would need to reference the technique developed by Reacher's alchemists, no records of which appear to have survived the intervening years. We know this, so why have you sent for us? Have you learned aught of value or not? Patience, good sir. One must introduce the subject before launching into specifics. From what we understand, travel between worlds is accomplished by passing through the nebulous rift which exists between them. Picture, if you will, the moment you were called to the first.
You touched a focus of some kind to help the Exarch pinpoint your location. His summoning spell then channeled the energies of the Crystal Tower to begin your journey to his world. The magics tore a hole in the walls separating Source and Shard and cast you into the intervening nothingness. In that place, the laws of nature hold no sway. Yet even through this realm of temporal and spatial instability, you were born safely to your destination in the first. The feet that guided you across such an unimaginable distance, both physical and metaphorical, was nothing short of a miracle. Then what of the many voids sent found in the source? Who guides them here, and how? An excellent question. Though there are several methods by which the Void's denizens might intrude upon our world, the rituals of summoning are the most typical. For example, let us consider the Gargoyle, a creature of middling power. Oh, we're going into like a whole PowerPoint presentation about this. Okay. To call upon such an entity, the prospective summoner must force open a void gate. The portal lasts but a moment and is relatively small allowing only an imp or other lesser being to squeeze through with their physical body intact. Our more powerful gargoyle, however, is too large for that. Creating a gate big enough for him would require vast amounts of energy, far beyond the reserves of any one mortal practitioner. Instead, tis far more common to bring over only the entity's soul. We had a taste of that ourselves when a certain exarch dragged us to the first. And just as our bodies remained in our world, the void sense physical form is left behind in the 13th. Once at its destination, the summoned soul is granted a temporary shell to inhabit. In the gargoyle's case, a stone effigy has proven a suitable vessel. You said that Voidsent must be called here deliberately by someone in the source, reeled in like a fisherman with his catch. Exactly. For a being to navigate the chaos of the rift, with or without form, there must needs be a guiding agent on the other side. When the hordes poured forth from Alag's Great Gate, it was the technologists who drew them through. Though, to my knowledge, planar fissures are, in essence, natural passages between our world and the Void, which require no such guidance to traverse. Why is only the boundary between the Source and the Thirteenth so fragile? 
so much so that it often tears open of its own accord. I believe solving that mystery is key to understanding travel between the source and its reflections. And how do you intend to get your answers? No, the danger is too great. Perhaps, but what some call danger, others think of as adventure. Oh. Were you not listening to my tale? Never mind that the means to expand the gate has been lost to the ages. Even could you force the portal wide enough, you would be greeted by an army of murderous horrors the very instant you step through. I assure you I was most attentive, and I agree that to go alone would be certain death. But if I were to bring along one who has already braved the Thirteen, and humbled the Cloud of Darkness, well, I imagine my chances would be much improved. Count me in or so much for taking it easy. Count me in. I want to go to the 13th so bad after uh, Shadowbringers. I had a feeling you might say that. With Silva and Unakali. Once again, I put my life in your ever reliable hands. That said, as much as I would like to march straight back to the Void Gate, there is the small matter of being unable to open it without the Sartrap's personal authority. Hmm. As I've said before, I will grant you and yours any boon you choose to name, provided it does not endanger my people. You have my word that we will take every precaution not a single void scent will be allowed to threaten Razat Han, assuming we manage to expand the portal in the first place. You have a plan. Actually, I had hoped you might help us with that. I presume the alchemists you retained supplied you with some explanation of their methodology. That they did. House Daimir was overseeing the project. Daimir. Ah, yes. The family associated with the great work. I did not fully comprehend the theory, but their research began with a void scent which had slipped through the fissure. After a thorough examination, they created an arcane simulacrum possessed of similar qualities. A man-made void scent, if you will. It was apparently indispensable in their efforts to enlarge the gate. A man-made voice. Yes. Being great admirers of the Archons, House Daimir submitted detailed notes to Charlene's official committee. They expected praise and accolades for their simulacrum and were thus devastated to be informed that their work had been classified as prohibited material. If that's true, then those notes might still be stored in a forbidden archive somewhere. Not Google, of course, since that library had yet to be built. Which leaves us with... Yep, the restricted archives in the... What was the, uh, fucking... Not Hamlet, but what was that place? The fucking library. Uh, with the restricted section of the Numenon, with Graha's favorite place to sneak around, or with what? With the restricted section of Numenon. Yes, it may very well hold a copy. In which case, I say we head directly to Charlien. Unless you anticipate needing help to reach the high shelf, I see myself being of little use. Go on ahead. I still need to find Mirage telling about the cult. 
Zal Foundation. Let us be on our way as well. to venture into the void. Do I sit idly by? No. There's a part of him that still, you know, believes these are his sister and his sister out there. Oh, that's really sad. It's really sad. I really hope that his sister is okay. I really do. I'd love to see. Alright, but I'm gonna end the episode uh, here. Next episode, we continue on in our investigation of the 13th, I guess, and traveling through the rift. Um, but until then, take care, and thanks so much for watching.